What's up guys and gals, welcome back to Space Hulk Ascension, my name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we navigate our way through the twisting corridors of a giant Hulk that has just pfft, straight out of the warp. Yep, straight out of the warp, that seems like a Chaos rap album. Straight out of, I don't know though, straight out of Compton, it doesn't have a V in it so you have to be like straight out of warp, so we need a specific location in the warp that everybody came from. Let's do some level ups, Ask is going to get an extra AP, Axel's going to get an extra ballistic skill chance I think. Because he's been missing a lot of his shots lately, the enemy's been dodging his fire like crazy. It doesn't really matter that much because he paints an entire area. But I would like him to maybe kill a little bit more efficiently. So I'm going to add some points right there. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's no big deal. He'll still perform his function perfectly fine. Even if we never leveled him up again. Over here, I'll probably take him up to 5 Ballistic Skill. Jari's the new guy. And luckily for us, they didn't allocate the points on him. Which is actually really, really good. I'll probably give him an extra AP as well. I just want to see what he can do with 5 Ballistic Skill. I think we've also got some new skills laying around on some of these guys. So he's got Terran Rend. Not really interested in that. Moving Fire. That's from the beginning of the game. Don't really need that. I think there's a new one in here somewhere. Maybe it's only for the Sergeant. I don't know. Anyways, we've got a couple of new skills in here that we can throw around. Obviously, I need him to have... Murderous Hurricane. Our Hurricane has taken a very, very nasty kind of Charlie Manson turn, and now it's just murdering like crazy. Only the most grimdark in the grimdark world. Jari, we need you with a chain fist. And then let's take a look at skills and make sure that there's not anything missing right now. He's got heat management. Why does he have heat management? That doesn't seem like it has a point. Let's maybe... Can I... Oh, I can't do that twice. I was going to say, if I could do that twice, that would be the stuff right there. I'll probably just give him a perception radius bonus, I guess. I think everything else is looking a little bit subpar. He reduces heat. He's got eagle eye and using sustained fire. That's fine. It has been working out pretty well for him so far. I should probably do that on everybody, to be honest, because Stigner's kill rate has been way higher than everybody else's. So doing something like that might actually make this thing come full circle and work out pretty well. We're going to do the next mission. I think it's called Last Stand. And so I think we're just going to be surviving 16 turns. Yeah, I took, a, I took a look at it just a second ago, and it seemed like where I wanted to go with this whole thing. It does seem like it's a good idea to do missions that allow you to farm up kills a little bit and level slightly. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Plus, it makes the series go on a little bit longer. All the people that, you know, get sad when a series ends, well, this is how we make it last a little longer. Gene Steelers are cunning creatures that will take any opportunity to launch an ambush on unwary foes. Your squad has fallen into one such ambush, but with your weapons and indomitable will, you will survive and drive away the gene stealers filled I feel like they're putting the cart in front of the horse right there slightly oh well not gonna watch the briefing I just don't watch them anymore the map is too dark and so you can't really plan anything anyways you kind of just have to go from the hip and so I tend to avoid it ah uh, there's a treasure chest right there don't fall for this when you play space Hulk they always put in multiple spawns it's the worst idea ever to actually split your squad in half don't ever do it there are very very limited applications for splitting like splitting your squad and they're not this part right here you always want to deploy together and then you can kind of vary up the strategy as you go on this side it looks like we have a spawn point actually interestingly enough so I think I'll probably go for that it looks like they're gonna spawn over here but I don't think they can get to him my goal right now, my assumption is that we have to survive 16 turns, so I bet this point is surrounded as well. And that means we probably want to block off everything we can down here and just turn this into a giant pinch zone where everybody's just like struggling and grunting and feeling foolish for trying to attack us. I'm going to have Stigner go this way. I'll probably have him crack that door open for right now. Jari, you're up right here. I'll have you hold that direction. Next, I'll put him right there. And I think we'll just go straight for that spawn right there. Which then leaves us with our flamethrower troop, who I think it might be wise to leave him... It's a tough call. What I'd really like to do at some point is move one of these guys down to block this face that way. Have this guy go over there, face that way. This guy over here, face that way with a flamethrower in the middle, just in case they need to fall back and flame out a hallway. However... I want to go get the treasure chest too, so we might get a relic weapon out of that, and if we can make use of a relic weapon, I would prefer to do so. I don't know if I should block this off right here. I feel like I should. At the same time, might be a waste of ammo. I don't think that that's a 7 move. That would have to be a pretty incredible move for them to make it that far. 
Let's find out. Yeah, I, I was gonna I was gonna say I didn't think it was gonna go down like that. So we'll put an overwatch right there. They are building behind the doors. The developers have added that they have changed the way that the gene stealers play over the last couple of weeks. Now what they have going on is the gene stealers were actually occasionally pool like this back behind a door. And the, de the developers said they were trying to get it balanced because obviously anybody who's ever played Space Hulk will know that's one of the most obnoxious strategies that the human player can use for gene stealers because it's basically not winnable. That's why, I mean, at my game shop, I've said this before, but nobody at my game shop plays Space Hulk because it's a foregone conclusion that gene stealers always win. And so nobody ever plays it at my game shop because what you can do as a gene stealer player is you can do precisely this right here. And so you just build up a bunch of guys here. You build up a bunch of guys right out of line of sight right here. Build up a bunch of guys out of line of sight right here. And then all in one turn you flush from every direction. And all you got to do is get one. All you got to do is get one Terminator, and you've already increased your chances of survival like monumentally and winning. So a few turns of that, and you tend to do pretty well. They may have added rules in the more recent versions to stop people from doing that. I think I'm not going to take a chance down here. It looks like they got a lot of guys trying to come down this way, and so I may just flame this out as a precaution right now. Just to make sure. There we go. And so hopefully that'll force them around this way so that they have to deal with our dear friend, Jari. I'll probably back him up slightly. I should have placed a mine right there, too, so that I had a little bit of extra... A little bit of an extra backup plan in case this whole thing doesn't work out. I'm going to turn off the camera so I can get some frame rate back because honestly playing this game in like 10 frames does not do it for me. It saddens me. I finally got around. I wanted to mention this in a video, but I'll do it at the end of the week in the weekend review as well. I finally got around to ordering a new computer, so that's pretty fun. I, I basically I looked at my finances and I looked at my tax paperwork and I figured out that... Lately, I've been having a lot of trouble getting games to run at like 60 frames, and since that's now like the YouTube standard, unfortunately, it puts me in a kind of precarious situation where, as a content creator, you're sort of expected to have 1080p videos now. So, I figured I'd give it a go. This is all going to be kind of dependent over here. How many do they have? Yeah, that's a pretty good ball of enemies right there. That is a pretty good hug lump of gene stealers. That's my new, that's my new unit of measurement for gene stealers, a hug lump. I think what I'll probably do then is I'll flame that out and that'll let them get a little bit closer because the AI is still kind of dumb. It'll still like filter down into here thinking that it's safe. It, uses, it thinks of the fire as cover and so it'll try and flood down into here and it'll usually get itself into trouble. Let's go next turn. Are you on Overwatch? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Let's get some combat done. There's the first shot right there. He should not have too many problems murdering his foes. He should get almost all of them within two shots. I see no reason why it should play out any differently, because with 5 attack skill, he's got a 50% chance to hit on like anything inside normal range. I mean, he's got to have a pretty good shot at it. Over here, we could try and burn out that hallway, make his life a little bit more easy. So there it is, we'll burn out a couple of them. We only got to survive 16 turns and then we're good. Apparently some majestic plot armor comes down and saves us after 16 turns. I don't really question it that much. If I was playing really, really cautiously, what I could do right here is flame this hallway out as well. And in fact, I think I may... Oh, he's only got one AP left. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I... Wait. It's because of Overwatch. Yeah, if I do this, he won't need Overwatch. So here, step back to there. And we're just going to kind of deal with the Gene Stealers as we... Oh, no, do not do that. Misclick, now is not the time. Oh, man, that would be the worst. That would be a terrible misclick to have right now. All right, so let's take the edge off some of these Gene Stealers over here. That's looking all good. I should have left them... I mean, I wish that there was a path over here that they could push forward through. But I'm a little bit... I'm going to try and get that chest later. But if we don't get it, we don't get it. I'm not going to get all angry and miserable about it. Ooh, that one tried to make it through the door. Okay, so he's trying to rush from both directions right now. That's okay. They can try and rush from both directions, whatever makes them happy. I don't think it's going to work, though. On this side, we've still got a really, really nasty predicament. I could just burn out that entire area right there to bring some pressure off that, and then they could step in and double overwatch this way. And in fact, I think that might have to be what happens. But it's reliant on the fact that... I'm at least partially able to get rid of this gene stealer on this turn. There we go. And if I can't get rid of that gene stealer, this plan is going to be... Well, 
it's going to be a long drop and a short stop if I move him over to here and then they keep spawning from this way. It's going to be a little bit nasty. However, if I do that right there, he'll still have the 1 AP to take his shot. I'm going to try and make this as effective as possible. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can get all of them on this turn. That's like my best shot right there, I think. That'll give me one, two, three, four. Well, I can get four right there. I can get four right there. Doesn't really matter that much, so I'll probably just go for right there. Give myself a little bit of an added spot, a little bit of added safety, I guess. Then what I can do, and what the plan indeed would be, is to put Jari right here. We're going to back him up. And he only has three AP left. Let's see, one, two, three, four. That should reach. Let me try and do this real fast. Let me give him a runa command, and if that'll get both of them, I think we'll be in decent shape. So yeah, I did get him. We'll be right there. We'll put him into Overwatch because this direction is going to be very, very dangerous for us on the next turn. Flamethrower unit's going to have to do his thing, otherwise this whole area is going to fold like a very, very wet washcloth. Or a very, very dry washcloth. I mean, either or. Either or. Doesn't really matter. But yeah, I've, I've been worried about this flank right here, and if we can't handle this on this turn, this entire thing is going to get incredibly, incredibly nasty. So yeah, without a double overwatch over here, I wasn't thoroughly convinced that we'd be able to handle all the gene stealers that were flooding through. I'm still not totally convinced, so this might continue to get a little nasty. But I think I can make it work. Wow, they are spawning a lot of gene stealers on this map. And I'm kind of in an overextended position that is not really so great. You both overheated? Okay, so since they both overheated, let's just go now. I'm going to ruin a command. Actually, can you drop the murderous, hur murderous hurricane? Cost eight? Interesting. Can you drop that like anywhere? Oh, he can. Well, that might be more useful then. What does it do? Hold on. Before I, I drop such a huge amount of Psy. Murderous Hurricane, Psychic Blizzard, which freezes survivors for one turn. A successful hit. Depends on willpower. Eh, we'll give it a shot. See what it does. Woo! I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Alright, so let's remove some obstructions here. I'm going to keep them covered. On this side, we're just going to continue loading this area with fire as best as we can. So there's a little bit more taken care of right there. I am a little bit... Maybe I can run him over to here to grab the treasure chest. It's going to be really, really close, and I'll have to flame out that hallway. I'm actually thinking he might be the only person who can do it. I, I want to save a bit of ammo, though, because we're already pretty deep down in the cups as far as it goes with our napalm or our promethium or whatever it is we're firing at the enemy here. I'm hoping, I was really, really kind of hoping that they would reroute in a different direction. Alright, so they're going to keep spawning down here. Which is definitely going to put some of our guys at risk. Especially him. So on this turn, what we're going to have to do... We're going to have to shoot this out, unfortunately. It's sort of like a compounding issue. Because if I don't shoot this out right here, they're going to go after him on the next turn. And I don't think I can get him back inside an Overwatch by next turn. I think it's going to be close. I mean, technically, so let's say that I move Stigner to right there. How far can you make it? He can make it into the room. And that's all that really matters. And then I could turn him around and have him Overwatch. So it's going to be one to turn. One to step, one to turn. So he should have five, I think. Either way, though, this is kind of nasty over here. So there's the first kill. We have to hope that the second kill goes through. And if it don't, we're going to be relying on the good graces of Overwatch here. I'm going to have him run back into the room. You, sir, are going to be back in and over here. Is that how they just talk to each other? Nobody says please. It's a grimdark world. That's how you know you're on the first steps of a grimdark land, as nobody says please anymore. The pleases and thank yous go extinct. Manners before everything else. Alright, it looks like we're in decent shape now. 
I was a little bit worried. If we don't get the treasure chest, we don't get the treasure chest. I'm not going to risk my character's lives on it at this point because they're so leveled up. I've also got a sentimental attachment to a lot of them, so I really would prefer not to get anybody killed right now. I'm actually pretty glad that he blocked that hole right there because what I thought the AI might try and do... What I was worried for a second is that they were going to use up all of his overheating right there and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that would have been... If the AI decided to fudge its AP like it does sometimes, the AI gets a bonus AP from something and the game doesn't really announce what it gets that bonus AP from. So just play the game as though they have seven. Even though it says they have six AP, play it as though they have seven because every now and again they get a bonus somehow and they get to move an extra space and I don't know if it's because there's another hero unit around or like what causes that but every now and again I sure as hell you've seen it in previous episodes I count out six for sure and somehow they still get there with the extra AP and so just be aware that that is a thing that the AI does pretty frequently actually it'll move seven instead of moving six or it'll move six and attack instead of moving five and attacking it might also have to do with maybe their AP doesn't cost the same for a melee attack I once again not sure a lot of the rules in this game are hidden from the player which is actually one of the major components complaints that a lot of players have about this game. In fact, I think it's come up on the forums a number of times now where people are like, I wish so much information was not hidden from me. And I agree with that assertion. It's very, very hard to play a strategy game when you're not sure entirely what rules you're playing by. Metagame knowledge is a real thing, and I get what they were going for in the design. They don't want you to have metagame knowledge. They want you to just adapt to the situation. But unfortunately, when playing a board game, you've kind of got to play it like a board game. Okay, so... We're holding pretty well on both flanks. I'm not going to be panicky about it. I mean, at any time, in Space Hulk, you're always within, like, two bad rolls of dying anyways, so I don't really worry about things being in close proximity to me. Hopefully we'll be okay right there. Make sure that he's nice and reloaded and ready to rock. This guy over here is really not helping that much. Part of me wonders if maybe I should place him right here facing this way with an Overwatch, just to maybe get him some kills so that he can level up a bit. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to do it. He's at 6 AP, so there with a turnaround, that would leave him with 1, so he couldn't overwatch unless I used that. Then he could overwatch. Eh, how long is this runway? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Eh, it gives them one turn to get to him. I think I'll hold off on it right now. It seems unnecessarily risky just to get some extra XP. I think that was probably their first big flood. All things considered, the Gene Stealers tend to pull up for like one or two turns now, is what I've noticed about their strategy. So usually the beginning end of your deployment is so much worse than the back half. The back half is usually just kind of like riding it out at that point. Just running around making sure that everybody's reloaded and everybody has the things that they need in order to do their jobs. In fact, I think I lose more characters in this game almost every single time just from forgetting to reload like one guy. That's why I'm so ridiculously careful when I play 10-man missions. It's because I know that I get ahead of myself and I forget about people. And so I have like a little checklist in my head. I check the bottom bar right here to make sure there's nobody with a ton of AP without an explanation. You know, I actually click through everybody as well to make sure that everything's set where it is because I swear I've lost so many missions in this game just by, you know, accidentally missing a character. When you're playing 10 different characters simultaneously, the AI is good at that sort of stuff. The human mind, eh, not so much. Or maybe my mind anyways. Might be the ridiculous amount of ADD that I have coursing through my mind at any given point. And it's gotten worse as I've gotten older, too. I used to be able to focus like crazy, and now it's just like... I hyper... Actually, I can hyper-focus now on things, too, because I that's what I did all through college, but... If I'm not hyper-focusing, I'm bouncing in between, like, everything, I guess is how I would put it. I'm actually surprised that they're not coming at me a little bit harder right now. I actually find that to be concerning. I don't like it when the AI is not doing things that I expect it to do. We're on turn 11, so we're almost the hell out of here. We might as well just kind of hang tight and do our deal for now. Let's go. I think that first big burst when they were sliding into first was the worst when they had it right up around here. I think that big, like, blob, I think that was all they had. I actually think that's a programmed occurrence for the mission. And if you can figure out a way like we did to keep that from happening by basically blowing up a ton of them over here and then forcing them to reroute slowly this way... Kind of destroys the entire strategy that the AI has going for itself. Honestly, I'm just going to start bypassing turns pretty quickly. Oh, no, we got a big spawn down here. Big spawn. Okay. We may need to help out with this over here. Well, I actually don't think we have anybody we can get into position from right there. 
Once again, we may have to depend on the graces of Overwatch. Okay. Well, he's got a he's got a sword and he's got somebody cross watching him as well, so he'll probably be okay. Got three over there, four over there. It's not too bad. I think that as long as they continue to pipe on in, see, they heard me talking, and now they're all grumpy. I gave them the impression that they weren't a challenge, and so now they're stepping up their A game. Is that four or is that three? That's three. It should be okay. I see no reason why three should not be manageable by one character. He missed a couple shots right there, but there's only two remaining, and he made that shot, so that's okay. That one is unfortunately within range, which makes me nervous, but we'll figure it out on the next turn. Probably take one shot at him to see if we can get him cleared out. Okay, awesome. Like I said, Space Hulk, at any turn, you are like one, two bad rolls from losing the game entirely. That's just the nature of Space Hulk and dice games in general, to be honest. That's how Warhammer 40k plays, too. I mean, I've watched people... That's why I've always thought it was interesting that they have 40k championships, because it seems kind of pointless to me. I've watched a lot of people play 40k over the years, and it sort of seems like dice rolls kind of dictate the game, to be honest. I mean, strategy obviously matters, but I think it's about 50-50. And I think any game where it's more than 50... Like, if, if it's more than, like, 20-80, if it's more than 20-80 luck versus skill, respectively, then I tend to think that it's not really, like, a chess-like game that, like, skilled players will win every time. Because I've seen amazing Warhammer 40k players lose to just terrible players because they just have bad rolls the entire game. There's nothing they can do about it. Just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So I, I always found it interesting that they have championships and things like that for 40k. But then again, maybe it's just for fun for some people. I'm going to try and get rid of him because he's actually the only one that's in a position that makes me nervous. And then we'll go back on Overwatch right here. I prefer that he be stepped back a little bit, but it'll be okay. Only got two turns left. What's the worst that could happen in two turns? Their spread distribution right now is very, very inc <laughs> incoit, so I don't think that that was a little bit redundant. Their formation is incoit at the moment, and so that doesn't lend me to be very terrified about the situation. I only get nervous when they have like 20 guys blobbed up right here, and even then I'm not really nervous. It's just kind of like, where's my flamethrower? And that's actually one of the prim that's one of the prime reasons I would recommend you not take the assault cannon. It's a pointless weapon in this game unless you're killing broodlords. It's not good for crowds. It's not good for, like, really anything other than broodlord killing, to be honest. So I would just stay away from it. And plus, even if there's broodlords, you're, if you're playing anybody other than the space wolves, you get normal bolters. And the normal bolters are super powerful because they don't overheat. So the Overwatch, the difference with the normal bolters is that they can't be, com they can't be combination weapons later on. But I would give up a plasma or a flamer just to have a gun that doesn't overheat. And so basically you can endlessly just own people with like 7 range skill the entire game. So if you're playing any other faction, my recommendation would definitely be to put bolters on everybody. And just have them hold lines because the bolters are more accurate and they don't overheat. So it's a really awesome weapon. And then just keep a flamer because the tactical significance of the flamer is not to be understated. And by comparison to the utility of the assault cannon, I mean there is no comparison. The assault cannon has almost no utility compared to the flamer. You stand them side by side, and one is definitely wanting. One is feeling threatened in the shadow of the other. I think that should be 16 turns, and we'll be out of here. Unfortunately, there weren't a whole lot of openings. We could have grabbed that chest, not without putting people's lives at significant risk. I could have pushed with the flamer right here, but the problem with that is that if I did that, they could have pushed down here and gotten a kill. There it is. So last stand is completed. Lost no Terminator. 16 turns used. Objectives have been completed. I doubt that we would have got a relic weapon anyways. It seems like the drop rates are really, really ridiculously low for relic stuff. I think the best thing that I've ever gotten is like plus 30% experience on the next mission or something like that, which is good. It's nothing to scoff at, but at the same time, it's nothing to really like risk a character over either. I mean, you're risking a character over, at the most, like, what, 90 XP on the next mission? Eh, not worth it to me. I think that's about it. Yep, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcast for the next episode of Space Hulk Ascension. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care, everybody, and hi-do!